napkins. Go back. Thank you. There we go. Nobody wants to look at my forehead. Okay, be prepared. I'm going to move you around just a little bit to make sure you guys can see what's going on. Welcome, welcome to everyone who has made it to the live today. Let's refresh everything so I can read the comments. Oh, look, YouTube told me I went live. Wasn't that so nice of them? <coughs> You'll have to excuse me. I'm still dealing with the whole allergy turned into something cold, whatever mess. Almost on the mend. Almost better. Almost better. I'm waiting for slow internet. Well, it's not too far off for me. As I'm waiting for the comments to come up, this is what I'm working on today. I'm working on these economy blocks. I don't know if I'm going to turn them into a pillow if they turn out the right size, or I'm going to turn them into a, a mini quilt wall hanging or something, maybe a sewing machine mat. I don't know. I'm leaning towards a pillow. If I can get, I'm thinking I can get three across, so three by three instead of nine of them. Come on, chat. Hello from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Hi, Sue. I'm glad you can make it today. And we have Pecola. Hope I said that close. I should probably put the computer closer to my old lady eyeballs. Come here, computer. Pardon me. Pardon our dust while we move things around. Make a lot of noise. There we go. So you can watch me watching me. There you go. I started working on them today. So hi, Cheryl. So that I would have some, at least in the process of going, and some examples. Plus, I just wanted to sew this morning. So I'm just working on the last round while everyone is coming in. I'll just keep working on these and then we'll move on to the beginning part. Cause it's five minutes to 11, so we still have some time. For all those coming in on the replay, thank you so much for joining me. I have my microphone hooked up today, so hopefully that helps. Hi, Sandy. Oh, Sandy, I gotta tell you, I am missing the Florida weather. Everyone kept saying, oh, it's going to be hot in Arizona, Robin. It's going to be hot. But y'all forgot to tell me it gets cold in the winter. I'm missing my 80-degree winter days in Florida. It was 44 last night. It's 68 degrees in the house, and I think we have a high of 66 today. And the sun doesn't really ever hit this house and warm it up which might be great during the summer, but right now I am just cold. As you can see, I have my flannel shirt on because I'm frozen. I pulled out this fun flamingo fabric. It Sometimes it has a flamingo in it, and sometimes the only thing I get is some flowers and butterflies, like on this one. Hi, Sammy Ann and Angus from California. I hear it's all your fault that I'm cold, that the weather comes from California to Arizona. Seventy nine today. We had a couple days that it was eighty and it was really nice. You can go outside in jeans and a t shirt. It was very comfortable eighty degree days and then it went away. And there's some type of winter storm that came over from California and there's like snow and cold. You have seventy in in Seattle. That is nice weather for you. Like, I, I have to go outside and stand in the sun, and the sun still, it's not a very warm sun. I would say, based on my knowledge, we're near Phoenix. I'm in Surprise, so I'm about 35 minutes 
west of Phoenix. Yeah, the weather has just been up and down. We've had rain. Well, Arizona rain for three days. It's It rains for like a little bit. It rained overnight for quite a while, but the rain, even the rain, it was like freezing cold. Even in the winter when it rained a little bit in Florida now and then. I know we're just apples and oranges here because uh, the boys tell me we're at 1,200 feet sea, above sea level or whatever our altitude, and I don't remember what Florida was. It was just a few hundred. So, of course, when it rains, it's a cold rain. It's not too bad as long as you don't go out in it, but I made the mistake of going outside, and I felt the cold air and the cold rain, and I'm like, nope, back inside, please. Thank you. I should have known the rainy weather was coming because everyone's talking about putting down like weed block and stuff like that, spraying their rocks. So when the rain comes, they don't get a bunch of weeds. So, I mean, I'm like, whatever. We have some rocks. We have some weeds popping up, but overall it's not bad. I just, I weed eat it in the front yard. I was telling my son, Justin, we have now become that house because it took me a little bit to get the weed eating string because we don't have a lawnmower anymore. We left them all in Florida. So I had to get new weed eater string and it took me a little bit because I had to figure out which ones to get on Amazon. Plus I wasn't feeling well. So by the time I actually got out there, it was like a week and a half or so since we've been here. And it was, you know, everything was pretty tall. So someone went by and commented on how nice it was looking and how I must have been out there a long time working on it. And I'm thinking, yeah, we are that house already. Because everyone's sitting out there and they're pulling weeds out of their rocks and they have their lawn people out. And I'm just like, let it grow. It'll be fine. We'll mow it down eventually. I should have known because in the Facebook group, everyone's always talking about the weeds and stuff. Hi, Lenore. I think I already saw that. I saw Sammy. Ann. Hi, Leanne. Robin's quilt basket. Hot in the summer, cold. In... Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I just didn't realize cold was cold. You know what I'm saying? Very naive, of course. But I just thought... It, I thought it was kind of going to be like Florida that it would be, hi, Jackie, I'm glad you can make it. I just thought it was going to be like, you know, you get a, a cool, cold winter. It's not that big of a deal. But, oh, no, the grandkids are sick. I'm so sorry, poor things. You're putting away all your goodies. Did you find some good stuff, Jody? I am behaving since I purchased, purchased a lot of fabric before moving, and I have some things I need to buy, like uh, I bought some ink for the printer, and I need to get some things for fabric postcards and stuff, but I'm trying to behave. Plus, Joanne's is 20 minutes away now. It's, it's not just around the corner, so I have to, uh, I have to, you know, I have to plan for a day to go to Joanne's. Of course you did not behave. I'm just going to finish these up and then we'll start from the beginning again. I put a link down below in the description box. I'm using the numbers from Diary of a Quilter. I like to go to her blog and find various fun things to work on. I work on a lot of things from her blog with my patrons. And she has a 6.5 and a 12.5 and economy block, which is perfect for our little community quilt. These will be turned into a pillow. I already made the one for the community quilt. So I'm going to hold off and see how many you guys want to send in first before I make more. I'm glad you can make it, Jay Murphy. I'm, I'm just happy to be sewing. I'm, my head still, you know, still sinus congestion and all the basic junk that goes with the super high pollen counts. And apparently it's the pollens like that everywhere because... Uh, people in Florida are still complaining about the pollen. People over here, people in Texas, it's just kind of everywhere, I guess. 
I haven't seen any pine trees, so that's a nice thing. Because I'm very allergic to the pollen from the pine trees. There was nobody there to monitor you, huh? Hey, I mean, you might have been by yourself, but uh, so you didn't have anyone to hang out with and chat. But you also didn't have to listen to anyone saying, Now, Jody, you said you're not going to buy anything. And you've got a basket full. Yeah, allergies are horrible with everybody. It's like We don't have the heat on. We don't have the AC on. The windows aren't open. We don't leave the house that much. So why is it coming in, you know? It's just seeping in somewhere. I do have to leave the house now to mail Etsy orders because I don't have a mailbox to put them in. It's really weird. Just the adjustment. I'm really a, a no change person. I like things the way they are and the way they've been. I don't care if it's hard or if it's easy. I just like, I just like things to stay the same, you know, figure it out, make it the way that works for you and then don't change it. And we lived in Florida for 42 years. So this is a bit of a change for me. And it's not a big deal, it really isn't. It's just, I don't wanna whine, but I kinda wanna stop my feet and say, hey, I lived in Florida for 42 years. I knew how to find my way around the town for the most part. It's, cha it, you know, the streets are all the same, but for me, I'm very much, I try to explain to the kids and I tell them all the time, like, I'm turn at the yellow house, turn left at the yellow house. When you see the tree that burnt down, make a right hand turn. If you see such and such grocery store, you've gone too far. So and everything here is the same. Can you request, I can request Jackie a pickup. I went to the big post office and they laughed at me and they told me they're too busy to do a pickup. But I went to the little one that's a mile away from my house and they said, sure, I can schedule a pickup. But if I'm, if it's only one order, like I had a recent order and it was just a few zipper pouches, I just went ahead and I just ran it up to the post office. And that way it got out the same morning, it went out the same day, and I didn't have to wait for a next day pickup. And then, because the, the, the big post office said, oh yeah, we're too busy, we can't come. You can put in a pickup order, but it's going to sit at your house for four days before we ever make it there. So I'm like, gee, that's nice. I'm gonna try it when I like start selling the scrappy strips again, cause those I usually end up with a big order. Plus they're, they're large packages and not something thin. I even mailed a fabric postcard from our little community box, but it's weird because you put it in the outgoing mail slot and it just kinda, I can lift it up and put my head down and see and it just sat there on a shelf. It didn't like drop down into a bin or anything. So I don't know. I mean, I could have put my hand in there and pulled it back out. So I'm not sure if I'm even going to put anything in that outgoing mail. An Etsy order would definitely not fit. So we'll see. Yeah, no time change here. So it is a bit weird. So of course, you guys know it's 11 o'clock here. So that means like my daughter's in Maryland. So it's... Uh, it's what, two o'clock for her? Cause it's three hours difference right now. So it's just kind of been weird. All right, so I'm on my third round. I'm gonna, I'm just, I'm gonna keep going. I'm just gonna finish these and then we'll start over. Yeah, not having to change the time is, it's kind of nice, but it's just, it's also kind of weird. I was told when I went to the second little post office, it's like a little, <laughs> If you think of a little, small, tiny town, a little country mail uh, post office, it's got like four parking spots, and it has uh, one or two people that work the counter, and it's probably got maybe 50 P.O. boxes. That's where I put my P.O. box, because I figured if I'm sending out an Etsy order, I can check the P.O. box. It's only, it's just really outside the neighborhood. I just have to go across an eight-lane highway I have to go across the train tracks <laughs> and then, you know, there's the post office and stuff like that. It's a bit crazy, but it's traffic is kind of weird. I don't know. I, I'm guessing like what this is, um, snowbird season. So it's, it's hit and miss. The traffic is pretty bad at lights, 
but when you're like on the road itself, it's not that bad. Hi, Kathy. Let me make sure I said, if I missed anyone, I'm really sorry, but hi. You need a gift quilt. Oh, you're going to have to get working hard on that. Disappearing nine patch. I love working on those. Bright fabrics and cheerful. Yep, yep, yep. So anyways, the little tiny post office lady said, I asked her, I said, hey, the big post office laughed at me. I said, I have an Etsy shop and a YouTube channel and blah, blah, blah. You know, and I, I can sometimes, if I have a sale going on, I might have, you know, 10, 20 packages going out or just one every day or something. And they said they don't do um, order pickup right at your door. And she's like, what? She says, they have to. That that's It's what we do. We're male people, you know? I said, that's what I thought too, but they just kind of laughed at me. So I don't know. My mailman's pretty cool. I met him. He brought us a... When we left the Cape Coral home, and since it's the same company we rent from here, they sent us certified letters stating, you know, this is what we think you messed up on the house. This is what it costs to fix it. And, you know, thanks for renting us from us and all that stuff. So we got one of those letters, and it came certified, so he knocked on the door, which I thought was pretty nice. In Cape Coral, they don't always bring them right to the door, because if you don't have to sign for them, they just stick it in the mailbox. Yeah, traffic is very strange. I don't know. It's just, it's an adjustment. We all knew there would be an adjustment time. I had focused on selling my house, packing up my stuff, and then I focused on, you know, doing stuff at the kid's house, and then I focused on driving across the country. So now I have to focus on, you know, actually living here and being a citizen and figuring out that. We were told that it's hit and miss. People aren't very, I don't want to say they're not friendly, but um, not everyone holds the door open when someone's coming up at the store. Not everyone smiles and says hi or have a nice day. Um, I, I haven't seen too many people smile, but I have come across many very, very nice people through like the uh, Pay It Forward Surprise Facebook group and stuff. So it's just been kind of hit and miss. In Florida, I don't know, maybe it's just because people are cold here. I've seen a lot of people wearing masks and stuff. Yeah, snowbirds should be leaving soon with Easter coming, right? I'm just going to guess it's the same as it was in Florida, that once it starts warming up everywhere, then the snowbirds will start to leave. We also haven't seen any school buses. We live near several schools. There's a lot of schools around here. But there's, I haven't seen a school bus. Maybe because the kids go out to the main road or they just all get rides to school or they get dropped off and whatever. I don't know, but there's a, I haven't, see, I haven't seen a school bus. Not one single school bus. It's been weird. Now, granted, of course, I don't go out enough, but during school time, you would think I would see someone. I also haven't seen a lot of construction vehicles because they're always building houses. They're building stuff all over the place here. It's a very up and coming. It's 11 a.m. in Seattle. It is 11.10 here also. Yeah, masks are being worn. It's, it's hit and miss, but everywhere I go, I see someone wearing a mask. Seattle switched to public buses for kids. It would probably be a good idea in Florida, too. Uh, the public transport isn't, I don't know how well they're on time, but they're always short. Cape Coral Lee County was always short on bus drivers because, you know, nobody wants to do it. The pay isn't all that great because you're not actually working. You're only getting paid while you're driving the bus, so there's a lot of downtime, I imagine. So they're trying to get like the retired people and stuff. Oh, that's true, Jody. Yeah, you don't have, there's no supervision or anything. 
I see that a lot in like um, when I'm watching just little TV shows and stuff where the kids have like they live in the city and they have bus passes and get on the bus or subway to go to school. And I always thought, hmm, I don't know about that. I guess that's one way to get the parents to drive their kids to school. There's a lot of schools that are semi-private or charter schools that even though it's not a private where the parents pay for it, the, it's paid somehow through the city or the county or whatever, and they don't even do buses. The parents have to drive them to and from school. So I'm keeping all of my colors the same all the way around, but of course you could mix them up. I just thought this would be a fun springtime pillow. Common courtesies are lacking, yes. It's it's really, it's, it's, it's hit and miss, and I think it has a lot to do with the age. I don't see as much, or I haven't seen it in Florida or here, where like the younger 25 and younger people, I don't see the same common courtesy that, you know, I saw like what I taught my kids. And then you'll see one or an adult or a kid or whatever, and they're holding the door open for like 10 people. So, I mean, it's like you said, it's hit and miss. I think I've gone almost a whole week now without hitting my head or my shoulder in the closet. I about knocked myself out hitting my head the other day. I'm sure I have a bruise on my head, but I think it's been almost a week now. So I'm doing pretty good getting used to it. I just had to prepare for next winter because I didn't really have winter winter clothes so I have to make sure I have some warmer things tell me all you guys in the in the cold wintry weathers what do you guys sleep in I have I have fleece pants and flannel pants and just a lightweight like cotton pajama pants, and then I have long sleeve t-shirts, and I found myself sleeping in a flannel shirt before. I, I guess I can get what, like a, a long sleeve flannel pajama top? Otherwise, I don't know what I can do. I get really cold at night, and we keep the house cool because there's really no sense turning the heat on unless it gets below. I think we have it right now set at 66. <laughs> With all the tile floor everywhere, I'm so happy to have my carpet because it's it's nice to sleep, uh, to be able to walk on the carpet with socks on and stuff, and I'm not right on the tile floor. I'm going to have to up my like hoodie game and stuff like that. Doors are help, held open by people of all ages in your area. Yeah, Sue, so you're in what I would consider like a small little town, right? No, there's actually a lot of people in Surprise. I think geographically, the per square inch, per mile, whatever, that it's still a large area because a lot of the farmland and they're still building lots of houses and buildings and stores. So I think basically there's still a lot of area for people to move around on. And there's less people here than in Cape Coral. And Cape Coral was actually geographically bigger. But, oh, I don't know. Oh, anyone in the area, do you guys know why there's fireworks going off in March? Before living in Florida in the cold weather, my favorite was flannel-backed satin nightgowns. Oh, that sounds good, too. I think I'm going to purchase more sweatpants. I like the sweatpants with the elastic on it. And I need to definitely work on some hand knit socks because I have, I actually have summer socks and winter socks you know, from Florida. I just haven't found my winter ones yet. And they're like thicker ones, more of the sports socks that go up above your calf and stuff. I like to sleep in those in the winter time. And then, you know, just, I go without socks in the summer unless the kids have the AC really cold. We'll see what happens in this house, how cold it gets. 
Huge thank you for the people that let me know about the little baby project iron of the Tulipink Aliso. I was able to order one and surprise, surprise, the uh, it's coming FedEx, so it's actually coming tomorrow. It's It took me a week to get this iron from Aliso, and I think it still came FedEx. I'm pretty sure it did, but it took a long time to actually ship, but Missouri Star ships really quickly. I don't order from them very often. I usually sleep in flannel shorts or long pants, short sleeve t-shirts. When it's really cold, I sleep in long sleeves. Sleep in flannels with an electric blanket. I wear fleece pajamas in Maryland. Oh, my daughter is in Maryland. I don't know where she is. She's somewhere in Maryland. I'd have to look it up. She's gonna go from Maryland. I think she said she's going to Ohio possibly next. Oh, the yellow is really nice. The yellow is a nice bright color in there to go with these. Oh, I like these. I just went into, I started sorting some of my yardage onto one of the big bookshelves in the closet. And I just kind of like put mine on a little one, the flamingos and stuff. And then I just pulled out a lot of the brighter colors for this. So I thought it'd be really fun. Fireworks are not illegal in Arizona, and people set them off all year. Oh, well, that's good to know. They are illegal in Florida, and they only, you know, um, turn their head and ignore it when it's like Christmas and uh, the New Year's. And I think they're starting to do a lot of them, like Fourth of July and Thanksgiving and all of that. So I'm going to trim this down to six and a half. I'm going to try to split it at three and a quarter on all of the points, but I want to make sure I have a quarter inch past the points. If I lose the points, I'm really not going to cry. It's going to be so colorful that I think it'll balance out. We saw fire. Oh, I saw fireworks. I thought it was really loud thunder. And I looked out the back window and it was over our back fence. So it was, well, I'm trying to learn all my north, south, east, and west. So it was kind of like west, but it was so close that I could see like the poofs and the clouds of smoke and stuff from the fireworks. So that was fun. So anyone who's just popped in, the link is down below in the description box. I'm using Diary of a Quilter's Numbers for the economy block. This is the same one that I would use for the community quilt, and that'll give you a six and a half inch one. You do need to trim after the first step. I have a little cheat sheet. After the first round of triangles, you square to four and three quarters. And after the last round, I'm doing six and a half. So I think it's turning out really nice. But I'm looking forward to the smaller iron coming in. I love the big iron, but if I could only have one, I would choose, the, I think, the smaller iron because it, I think it'd be easier for me because I work with a lot of smaller blocks. Patrons and I do a lot of inch and a half projects, you know, so an inch and a half of this to an inch and a half of that. And I think the smaller iron would just make it easier to still be able to see the block underneath the iron when I'm working on it. The Seattle 2 sports and all, yeah. Robbie was wondering if it's like March Madness, and I'm like, I don't know. I mean, there's some kind of, I see banners all the time for OUA some word that I don't know for the University of Arizona or something in this area. It seems like that must be really big because there's signs all over for that. The baseball field, or if there's a resort in the area, they tend to set off fireworks off. Oh, good to know, Jackie. I mean, it didn't bother me. If fireworks, we're used to them. I mean, we're used to neighbors setting them off. So if uh, these were like big professional like not just something you buy oh I wonder if they have like firework stands here like Christmas tree stands we'd have those white tents with the fireworks for whatever the holidays are it's just gonna be interesting the learning all the different things I've already learned some of the stores I don't like I'm going to take someone's advice and find, uh, Justin found City Hall, so I want to find a, like, a welcome center or something where I can get, maybe I can get it at City Hall, a, a local map, a paper map, 
so that I can mark what stores I like and don't like because I really end up getting my I think it's the U of A. Oh, did I? I said O U A. Maybe it's U O A. Yeah, it's something with an O and a U in it. So their banners are all up and down the roads. And I saw a really nice baseball field. So I'm guessing like the spring training maybe there or something. Spring training was huge in Florida, and I know it's pretty big here too, because they have the big tarps around all the fence, and they have the little like moon cutouts of it, and you could see people with kids on their shoulders looking through them, and there was people playing uh, catch in like a swell of rocks for I guess when you know really get a monsoon coming through and it floods or whatever, and they were just down there playing uh, catch, and those were older gentlemen too, so it's been interesting. University of Arizona, yeah. Uh, my daughter said some strange name, and it and it was oh, I don't even want to guess. It's it had a lot of vowels in it, like an Indian type name, because of course where we are. There we go. I am really loving these colors. I found my purple flower thread cutter. I was so excited. My daughter, when unpacking the pod was pulling something off the top of the boxes and then I couldn't catch this little bin a plastic bin of stuff and it fell and broke and I just kind of like put everything back in it and stuck it in the garage and then all the cardboard boxes got on it so I unburied it the other day and then I just found this today because I was really missing that all right so here's what I have so far so I was thinking kind of mixing some of the flowers in like this and then this should make about an 18 inch pillow when I just do a nine patch of them so I thought that would be fun and I have enough to make two sets of nine. Oh, there's like the purple I would move things around and mix them up and all so that is really good the Seattle Mariners have spring training down there you have the fireworks stands, yeah. I figure they probably should, right? Because they want to make money and anything to make money. Excuse me why I try to rehydrate. I'm almost fully rehydrated after the move. It takes a long time for me to, like, I could have used a nice little home IV therapy, get me all back to better, and then, uh, you know, just move forward. But I got to do it on my own. Thanks, Jody. I thought they were really fun. I just found this pink fabric with the swirls. When I was ordering some batting from Joann's, it was on sale, so I grabbed that. Crazy talk all the time online with Joann's and their bankruptcy. I have no idea what's really happening there because, again, I don't have two local stores to just drive to, you know, five, ten minutes away. Which is good because I really don't want to pop into a Joann's regularly or anything like that. I think, you know, I know everyone's hit and miss with this and everyone has their opinions. But there's there's a Hobby Lobby either here locally or it's being built somewhere over, for those of you that know, over in that 303 complex. They're building a bunch of stuff over there. I tell you, I had to laugh the other day because when I drive around and I'm using the maps on Google Maps on my phone, I had to go get an x-ray for my new pain management doctor and I keep ending up by the big post office and that's like right near where my daughter's uh, Mission Barbecue is going to be built sometime this year. So I don't know what I'm doing, but no matter how I go and where I go, I end up at that darn post office all the time. Oh. Tohono Odom Casino, located near Loop 303 and Northern Parkway. Yeah, I'm really struggling with the whole north, south, east, and west. Oh, Smorzies wants to be fed lunchtime. That was going to be the one thing about this time. So hold on while I just kind of get my long cord here. Come over. The cats really love, I, I went from a twin size bed for years to a double bed now or a full size and the cats have been loving it because they can snuggle with me in bed at night when they're freezing cold and it's like they can lay next to me and not fall off the bed. I don't push them off the bed as long as I lay in the middle. So I have two cats that sleep with me. I have 
little smorzies and Miss Mocha. Miss Mocha loves to burrow underneath quilts and stuff. All right, there's that. Opens late 2024. Oh, okay. Thank you. I thought it wasn't, it, like, I know Kohl's is in one spot, and then they're opening in that new plaza area, and so there's already a Kohl's, but I wasn't sure if there was a Hobby Lobby yet. So that'll be good. Uh, they'll have a, a nice, they should have a nice grand opening, maybe a sale or something for uh, around Christmas time and all that. I like going to a regular fabric store. I like buying online. I have no problem. Missouri Star has a lot of fun stuff and like um, inchworm fabrics and shabby fabrics and the other fabric one. Excuse me. <coughs> they have a lot of good stuff, but I like to go in and just get a quarter yard. And it, they don't do that in most places online because it's not worth their time. But I, I don't mind. I'll spend $100 on quarter yard cuts I just want to get like, you know, 50 or 100 quarter yards. So I have to go in a store to get that. So that's how I can get a lot of these fun colors. I can just go and get a quarter yard or a half yard. Because if you check out the blog for the the dimensions and stuff, the largest piece I have to cut is four and a quarter inches. So I can just go and buy it. Yeah, they said they're, they're closing a lot of Joann's. A lot of them are like, uh, because of the bankruptcy, they're closing a lot of these, the even big popular ones, depending on the area, I guess they're not busy enough. So a lot of people are having like 75% off sales because they're Joann's. They've been closing a lot of stores over the past year or two. Yes, seeing the fabric, especially when you want to buy something like an aqua and you want to see is it more of a blue aqua or a green aqua so it really makes a difference all right so i have uh, i have what do i have like four more of these i have a whole bunch i won't bore you guys by cutting uh sewing them all so i have four more centers and then i have the outer fabric so this way i can kind of mix and match them all so on these center ones, you need two squares because we're going to cut them diagonally. So if you want to mix and match, I think it'd be fun, like maybe to do a, a white around here or have this all be the same for all of them or a couple of fabric colors and then just have all four of those be different also would be fun. So I'm going to do probably what you shouldn't do. Oops, Morzies is done. I'll have to grab that so no other cat eats it because it's special food for her. Hi, baby. You good? Yeah? Are you frozen little girl today? I like to sew just without my shoes on. I bought a new pair of slip-on shoes for here. Um, they're all right. I bought them on Amazon because not knowing all the stores and everything, so I just picked these up. But they don't have, they're like the skater shoes. They, they have a little bit of an arch inside, but they're not like super, well, they're flexible, but I kind of like to still press the foot pedal with uh, just my sock feet on, you know, no shoes. So it's kind of nice. The carpet's starting to feel a little warmer, so maybe it's starting to warm up in the house a little. Have you tried a wearable blanket to stay warm? I have one. It keeps the tops of my legs warm down to my knees. I actually have, when Rob was really sick, when my husband was sick and was going through chemo and stuff, he was freezing all the time, just like most everyone is when they do chemo. I bought him a big terry cloth robe. Now, Rob was six foot one, six foot two, give or take. And it was a big robe that went like down past his knees and everything. I have that somewhere in the garage packed in a box. I wear that a lot. I'll just wrap that around me because it goes all the way down to my ankles. And I'll wrap that around me during the day if I'm cold and stuff. Yay, Giovanna, you made it. Welcome, welcome. And then we have Erica's made it. Hi, Erica. Glad you can make it. Yeah, the, you know what, the matching of the colors and stuff like that, I've just gotten used to seeing things. If you do it enough, when I first started quilting years ago, I mean, I quilted a lot, but I just used bright colors with a black background. Hey, everything works if you put it up against white or black, right? 
And now because I'm doing the videos constantly and stuff, I'm seeing the colors more and more and I'm just getting used to choosing the fabrics and stuff like that. Your eyes, if, if your eyes get used to something over and over and over again, I think this is pushing it. You know, you can get used to it and it starts to work a little better. When you start seeing a lot of things like on Instagram and what other people that are better at it than we are, you know, you see what they're doing and your eyes just kind of learn what you like. And I don't care. Someone can tell me like, hey, orange and purple don't go together. Orange and brown don't go together or something. But I'd be like, hey, you know what? It looks good to my eyes. And when we do, when we start to quilt along, I'll show you this simple cheat method too. I'll tell you right now though, you just go to the salvage and it tells you all the colors that are in this fabric. So if you're like, hey, I love the way these colors look together. I'm making some economy blocks to turn into a quilted pillow, a nice little springtime one. But if I'm like, hey, I love the way all these colors work together, I can take the salvage and go to my stash or the store and I can see, okay, well, yellow and orange, they look good together. So let me find a yellow that's similar and then I can build around that. So I can say like, oh, well, the green is close. It's not exactly the same, but I tried to pull colors that were in here and then just based on whatever I happen to have on stash is what I used. So using the salvages is really a good way to use it uh, to figure out your colors and stuff. Hi, Diane. Oh, all the way from the UK. I'm drinking coffee and putting away my stuff from Sew Expo. Oh, Jody, that could take a while, huh? Yeah, orange and brown. It's like, I don't know. I couldn't even tell you what two colors shouldn't go together. I also go on to Google and I'm like, I have this aqua fabric and I don't know. I want to have three colors to go with it. So I'll Google what colors go with aqua and they have paint splotches and they show you like rooms and stuff where fancy interior designers decided what goes good together. And then I just go from there. I either use my eye and say, hey, these are all nice and bright and colorful. I like it. Or I use the Google and let someone else who's smarter than me tell me what to do. I don't want to be told what to do, but I don't mind using it like that to let me figure it out. To help us make one for her new studio. Oh yeah, you can also, if you want to make these for the studio for the community quilt, then this is the same process. That's what got me going on it because I mean, hey, if we're doing it for the studio, then I, uh, in yesterday's video, I have all kinds of links to, I, this is probably the fourth or fifth live stream of <laughs> making economy blocks. Apparently I like to sew these a lot. So I just take my beginning square and I closed, I closed it. I folded it in half and I gave a gentle press without moving my fingers or stretching the fabric so I can find the center point. And then I do the same thing with my triangle. Now this is a bias edge, so be careful. And I put it on here so I can line up the center points. I usually flip it over, but today I've been trying not to flip it over and see how that works. And then just an actual quarter inch seam. If you go with scant quarter inch seam, the Diary of a Quilter that's linked down below in the description box, she says it can get a little bit off. Um, and, you know, you make your blocks and you're, you'll lose points and stuff like that. So you want to go with an actual quarter inch. Hi, Mei Chu. Thank you so much. Hi, Janet from Iowa. We have a few people from Iowa. Diane. Wish I could, as in Florida. I was in Dallas, Texas three weeks ago. It was lovely and sunny. Yeah, I'm over in Arizona now. I'm missing Florida just because... Just because I, I like I like keeping with the status quo. I don't I oh, I wanted to leave Florida one hundred percent, you know. I, I was tired of the area of Florida that we were in. But at the same time I kinda liked, you know, you know, this is Florida. I know what to expect. I know, you know, it's gonna be cold, it's gonna be warm, I, I know all of that. And that's all. I just kinda like knowing. I lived in the same house for just over twenty years, so it was nice. Chosen my fabric 
It is white on white elephant print, zebra, and an animal print with brown, black, and gold. That's going to be fun. Janet's in Maryland. I just mentioned earlier my daughter's in Maryland working at Mission Barbecue. I, I couldn't even guess the name. It's a long name of where she is. I always have to check my phone. My phone tells me where she is. And then after you do all one side, I press both sides across from each other. That way it's easy. I can um, only press it once. And I'm not going to touch it with an iron until I sew both triangles on. I've got, Giovanna, I have something. It started with allergies, and it went into my sinuses and down into my chest. So it's it's nothing like a major infection or anything like that. It's one of those things, take some Alka-Seltzer cold and sinus, and some, uh, thank you, Sue Smith, for reminding me to take Mucinex, and then just hope it goes away. If it would warm up a little bit, I feel like I could get out in the sun and when I was working out in the front yard and weed eating and stuff, it really helped clear it out. But then it gets cold, and I'm not used to this cold at night stuff, you know? So then I get sick. Uh, ginger tea. Yeah, I've just been pushing the water right now, trying to stay hydrated and keep everything, you know, moving through the system and all. At least now I can talk without going into a coughing fit, but I did I did make sure I medicated myself at 10 o'clock. Yeah, I need something. I, I should make some tea or something, something warm. I've, I've been wanting like soup, but I don't have the ingredients in the house because I don't have my pantry stocked up like I used to. And it's just things I've got tired of spending money and buying things and going to the store. The desert cold is definitely different from Florida cold, 100%. 100%. We didn't have very many, um, like, bone-chilling cold days. The last few years, it's supposed to be a little bit better this year, but the last few years in Florida, it was, uh, you know, we hit 90 in February instead of April. I think I wore jeans like three times. Oh, thanks, so Terry. Yeah, I'm just. It's said something. It'll it'll pass. I just. It's been something since we moved here. So we're we're coming up on a month next week. I think we left on the twenty first of February. So it's like, ugh. My daughter got to Maryland, and she was like, I think. Uh, just everyone's immune system got a little compromised. We were all worn out from driving here. It's Ottawa University in Surprise. Well, that's a lot easier than what my daughter was trying to say. That makes sense. My daughter was putting way many more vowels and uh, syllables and stuff in the word. We know Ottawa from Ottawa, New York, so as long as that's how it's pronounced here, then, you know, it's all the same. But we had, everyone was starting to feel better. It, it got hit, like I said, it hit 80. I think we might have hit maybe even like 82 or something. And then it just, the temperatures dropped again, and we're just not, we're not used to that. I said everyone was like, we were sleeping on the floor or air mattresses for the first few days, and the floor is just freezing cold, and it's just, you know, we all got sickish of some form or another. So we'll all get better. Chicken soup tomorrow. Yeah, I, I have, I'm like, I don't even know. I bought, I did buy like uh, elbows and stuff like that. Maybe I'll make macaroni and cheese tonight. I had a burger with, uh, I made potato salad and some baked beans yesterday. With the whole sinus thing, I have some sense of taste. I have zero smell, and I could taste some food, so it's kind of like food is not interesting, you know? So I'm like, whatever. 
So I just have to make sure I still get enough in me to combat everything. But yeah, I, I might make some macaroni and cheese because that's nice and warm. I do have some broth and I have some chicken and the noodles and stuff. And I have rice, so I could do that. I ordered potatoes from Amazon because I wanted to get some Alka-Seltzer cold flu and sinus stuff. And it's Amazon is like right here. So you can have it delivered just in a couple hours, but you have to spend $25. So I ordered I ordered a bag of potatoes. Because I've never ordered food like, ow, that's hot food from Amazon before. So I wanted to try it out and see because it's um, oh, Whole Foods or something like that. See now, okay, now I'm getting a little warm. I got the big light on and everything, so it's nice. The rain past couple of days doesn't help. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't warm up very fast. And everything being either the fake wood floors or the tile floors. Um even the the cement wall behind the house and stuff really hasn't dried with all the rain because it just the sun doesn't really hit it that much to warm it up, I guess. Oh, yeah, Terry. I just, I, I didn't do it before because, I mean, okay, it's not that far to go to the store, but sometimes just to go into a store to get some type of medicine or I like the idea of getting fresh fruits and veggies and stuff like that. I just have to see, you know, how well they pick them out because we've, the fre- we've done the fresh produce from uh, Walmart before and either had it picked up or delivered, and they don't, they're not very good. It's usually just a bunch of young people, and they don't pick out produce very well. So I guess it's going to be a location thing hitting this. Oh, you can't carry anything. So yeah, it's very helpful for someone else to deliver it right to the door. I do that when it's something like I order my cat litter, either from Amazon or from Sam's Club to have it delivered because it's so heavy. I, I don't want to put it in the car, in the car, from the car to the house when someone can just deliver it right to my door. Boy, if my grandparents could see us now, they'd be talking about how lazy we are when we're just having things brought to us. Oh, Robin doesn't want to carry cat litter. She has it delivered. Oh, that's good. I'm glad, you know, like I said, I think it's just hit and miss on who's working. Yeah, we're all here together. It's nice. Yeah, Jackie, I don't, I just, I don't see the point sometimes. Like, I do a lot of monthly shopping. And I just don't see the point. We did a few times, no... Walmart was a half mile from the kids' house in Florida. It was walking distance. So I very seldom had them deliver stuff unless it was from the big Walmart across town because I'm like, Robin, you can get in your car and go a half a mile. You need to get out of the house, be around other people and stuff. But here, still trying to learn the area. I did find the movie theater accidentally. I went to a Walgreens to pick up a prescription. I ended up on a different side of town. And I found a movie theater. So it's just, it's, it's more of an effort. And I feel like I'm gone, like I'm driving for hours and miles and days when really I'm just driving two miles down the road. But because I told myself, in whenever possible, I go to the store and take route one. But when I come home, I take a different route just to help familiarize myself more with the town. Yes, you are broken. Exactly. Yep, our grandparents would definitely call us wimps. Wow. That's crazy, Jody. Yeah, all the pollution and all the people making everyone sick. Yeah. Delivery is not great. You need to find someone, Jody, and then tip them well, and then hopefully, you know, they'll they'll deliver properly for you. 
Because really, it all comes down to the tips, you know? If you tip them. Okay, here's the question. So we have the Walmart delivery, the home delivery. We paid the paid the $50. Justin and I split it because he wanted to get something as an early release and he got a discount and stuff because he had the delivery. So we were reading. Now, when you have that Walmart home delivery and you pay the $50 a year or whatever, you're not supposed to tip the driver. But I don't know about that. And then they, when you shop, it says, do you want to, you know, leave a spot for a tip? So I'm kind of curious, does everyone tip their Walmart home delivery drivers if you have that special Walmart Plus or whatever it's called? And if so, how much do you tip? Because I'm like, these people are, you know, I think it's someone else that does all the shopping in the store and then someone just drives it in their car. So I'm like, I don't know. It's like the pizza delivery guy. I mean, I tip him, but it says online not to tip him. And people are like 50-50, so I don't know. Just kind of curious. I tip everybody, yep. Walmart, you have so many hours to tip or change your tip, so it depends. Yeah, I like that idea with Walmart that you can tip them later. Like, I want to know if it's been delivered and delivered properly and all of that stuff before I give the tip. Giovanna does her own shopping. I mostly do my own shopping, too. Yeah. I mean, they say, you know, if you leave a nice tip, the, the, you know, maybe the driver will be nicer or something like that. But I don't think it works that way anymore. And a lot of people just expect a big tip. You see those people that come back to the house and like bang on your door and why didn't you leave me a tip or why is it so small? I'm like, I don't, I don't know. Uh, speaking of the door, there are a lot of people that come up to the door and what's really annoying me, and it's just a little thing, but all right, they come up to this. We have a screen door and a front door, as you guys might remember if you saw the video. They open the screen door and they put a business card in there. And I get that, but we're getting a lot of them. But they also come up to my car parked in the driveway and they put it in the window, my driver's side window, and they just stick it in the little gasket there where the window goes up and down. And I thought, that's just a little bit rude. I'm not comfortable with that one. Like, I don't really like that they do that. Hi, Diana. Amazon Fresh lets you change your tip online, but before that uh, lockdown, yeah. Oh, you left an envelope for him. That's really nice. Neighbor gets a lot delivered and their house number is just one ditch difference. We've had, oh yeah, I imagine that happens a lot. We didn't have nice little stores with good stuff. Maybe that's what it is, $100 a year. I must have split it with my son. That's so why I paid 50 and he paid 50 then. Thank you for correcting me, Sandy. Oh, yeah, bottled water would be nice, especially in the summer. Oh, so that's probably why a lot of people uh, give them cash or something because they're not going to see the money right away. And then with cash, you don't have to, you're supposed to claim it on your taxes, but you know, you know. No, I just. No, you're right. I paid I paid 50 because we split it. But everything, I have to get everything through my son then. So when I order something, I have to get a special passcode from him. And then every time I look at stuff, they say, Hey, Justin, you were looking at this. You should go ahead and buy it. And he's like, Oh, Mom must have been looking on it. So I don't know. I'll see if I choose to use it next year or not. I might just get my own plan. But then I would definitely, you know, use it more often and have food delivered and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's like Walmart says you don't have to tip, but then they leave a spot for it.
oh yeah yeah if it if they're just bringing me a bunch of bananas or something it's like whatever but if they're if i'm doing like a regular order and stuff i feel like i didn't tip the first time because it said not to and i'm like oh it specifically says don't tip so, but then i'm like that nah, didn't didn't feel comfortable you know it didn't feel right They have to load it in their car and they have to bring it to me and take it to my house. Now, granted here, the walk from the road to the front door is not very far at all because the drive, these driveways in this community are half the size as they were in Florida in length. Oh, I didn't do any orange. Oh, that's fine. You don't tip in Italy. I don't know. They they say the tip is included in their wages. With on the Walmart Plus online, it says it's included with the you know our drivers are paid. You know they're not paid. I guess they're not paid minimum wage or whatever. They're paid enough that you don't tip them. Walmart's, you know, I just, Walmart and Florida are always like, oh, we're doing this so that all Walmarts are the same. We, we stock the same thing at every Walmart across the nation. And I'm like, you guys are lying because I can't find things here. Plus brands have different names. They, they have like Hellman's mayonnaise isn't over here. It's like best foods now. So everything is, is just a little bit different. Here, Giovanna, everybody gets tipped. Like, there's, you're either getting a tip or you're getting like a Christmas bonus or something like that. The the trash guys, the uh, newspaper delivery people, even the mailmen in Florida got like Christmas tips and cards and stuff. I never did anything for my regular mailman because he always took like the month of December off and stuff. So I used to give him like bottled water and he was comfortable and he'd be like, hey, Robin, you got any bottled water for me today? And I'm like, sure, here you go. Because, you know, it's it's hot in the summer and they don't have, they have windows open all the time. All right, I'm going to trim to four and three quarters. And when I trim that, I am going to just kind of guesstimate and what looks right. If they're not all lined up perfectly, I'm not going to you know worry about it too much. It's really just trimming a smidge off. So I try to make sure there's a quarter inch past the corners. But, you know, it is what it is. Oh, I'm going to really, this one's tight. Four and three quarters. Three quarters. Yeah. So it's interesting. And how everyone does things differently. Because they say some countries, like I'm imagining Italy and stuff, they pay their workers good money and they don't pay them like below minimum wage so that the customer actually pays the waitress's salary and stuff like that. All right, so these can go over there. These can go here, put that there. I still don't have a spot for my ironing station. Oh, these are really bad. Um, I, I still have bins, the plastic Rubbermaid bins sitting in here. So I just slide them up over here to the table and I put this little setup on top of them. So I'm still kind of looking for a table and I'm looking for like a chair or something. 13th month wage and some companies give a 14th month wage huh it's interesting yeah everything's just it's like everything is the same around the world but it's just a little bit different makes it fun and interesting yeah it worked a little off but it's okay in the grand scheme of things when everything's all put together if I didn't say these things out loud and you didn't notice it you probably wouldn't notice you know 
That's what's fun with this block. I really enjoy the one with the with the rounded bits like when you put the two squares of fabric together, you stitch around them, you put an X on it and you just cut through the top fabric with your scissors. We did that during a live stream. That was really fun. I like that version. I just didn't want to, and I didn't want to like confuse that. I mean, you could use that version of course for the community quilt, but since I put some of these links up, I just kind of wanted to stick with the same thing. It's a bonus. Yeah, bonus is, a, is nice. Now here, a lot of places, if you get a bonus, it goes on your paycheck and then it gets taxed. And some places are really not that nice. Not only do they tax it, but they also take like your um, your health care, like your insurance money and stuff out. And everyone's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, no, no. That's not, not, not right. All right. So there's that one. So now I have these. So I need to put the next round on, right? These are the four and a quarter ones. One, two, three, four and a quarter. Yep. So I want to see which colors I have so I can kind of mix it up a little bit. Like I didn't use orange on this round, so I have more here too. See, I didn't use red, so I think I'll put some red with this one. That'll be fun. So again, we have two squares cut in half, so we have four triangles. And these are the little ones. Yes, those are the little ones. So these are all my big guys. And I'm going to do the two pillows so I'll be able to mix and match them a little bit more. And if not, I can just make, if it, you know, if like I have too many of one thing, I have too many purples or something, I can go ahead and mix them up a little bit. And add more colors in. Ooh, my nose itches, sorry. I think I'll do a yellow here. Just so that they're not all the same. Oh uh, yeah, thanks everyone. I would love some thumbs up. And we're we're finally getting close to oh my nose it's just sorry. We're finally getting close to uh, the fifty thousand subscribers. I'm gonna have to pull out that flamingo quilt and actually get it all quilted and put together so we can do the fifty thousand giveaway. That'll be fun. All right, there's that. That's all good now. More drinks. We'll see how this Saturday works for a while. Some of you might be might remember if you've been here from the beginning. I used to come on on Saturday mornings at 11 a.m. for the longest time until I needed the weekends to sew. I was trying to remember, and I don't remember if it's during the time, like after Rob was sick or something and I needed, cause I had to be with him all week going to all the appointments or if it was something else, but then we switched to Friday so I can sew on the weekends. But now I have a nice little routine going. So I thought we'd try Saturdays again. That way it allows people who, you know, when they're working on Fridays and stuff, Oh, Soteria has a channel. Everyone should go check out Soteria. Let me see if it works. You should be able to click on the three stars next to her. And then it should say, if you have the channel under this name, it should say go to channel. Whoop, come on, YouTube. Uh, no, I can't see that. So Terry, is your channel under So Terry? Is that the name you have it with? Oh, 
Oh, painting fabric. They say it's fun. Yes, it is. Okay. You should be able to just search it then and find you. It's always fun to have new channels coming in. Circling back around to how Robin likes everything about the same and I don't do change very well. My daughter laughed at me because I'm setting up this room, the bedroom, and it worked for you? Okay. It might just be because it's my channel, so it wouldn't work for me. It was being a pain. It was doing it earlier, like when I clicked on my own name when I was putting up the uh, pinned comment and stuff. They were like, go to the channel. I'm like, I'm already there, YouTube. But anyway, yeah, my daughter laughed because I'm setting up this room to be as identical to my other rooms as I can. I mean, it's, some of it has to do with just the way it's set up, but I have my bed, and it goes right into the bathroom, and that's how it used to be when I was in Cape Coral at my house. And I have, like, the bookcases kind of set up the same way, and I put the same, because I'm used to it. You know, I found out, like, this works, so if I at all possible, I'm going to do it the same so that... As I'm reaching for my thread or the seam ripper, if it's in the same spot all the time. Oh, Jackie's a moderator? Excellent. That means you go live. It's always nice to hang out with people on live. Always chat because I'm usually you know busy doing something like this or whatever but I do like to go to live or I'll just go and watch the replays and stuff yeah once you're used to it I'm definitely a creature habit definitely so I can eat the same food I can eat a salad for lunch every day for a month and I have I can eat I, I make a meal and then I can eat it for five days. I'm still doing the, um, I like to eat my big meal at lunchtime. And then just something simple for dinner. So that's still working really well for me. All right, so now I just need to pay attention to make sure I put the same fabric on the other side. So that's what I figured. You know, if I find something that works for me, why not just keep at it, right? It took me a while to get my studio set up. I've been here for a while. I've probably changed it like four different times. So once it's set up the way I like it, I mean, why not? Things are a little different here, of course, but, you know, for the most part, it's the same. I have like all my printing stuff together. It makes sense to keep it all in one spot. I just have it all over here right next to me. So it works. The black bookcases aren't bothering me as much as I thought they would at the last studio with the crumb curtain studio. I had brown ones in there, and oh, it, I, I didn't like it at all. But the black ones, they seem to be far enough behind me that I can't feel them. Oh, I don't know. I didn't know. I, I stopped watching her when she moved in with her children at some point. I haven't watched her videos in a long time. Exactly, Terry. If it works, you know, hey. Yeah, I watched for a while. I was probably, I was probably up to about a year now. I haven't actually watched. I don't watch as much YouTube as I used to. Some people, you know, oh, I got fuzz on my face now. Some people stop doing things that I, I watched regularly or... <laughs> Giovanna's like, that's it, I'm done, I'm good. I'm not moving another thing. I try to visualize before I move stuff because I used to do the same thing. Just like, oh, it's been, it's been six months or a year, time to rearrange the living room. But with the last house, it just wasn't possible. And that's when I kind of got into the habit of just keeping things the way they are. 
because we had that mirror on one side of a long rectangle and then you just put the TV on the other side and that's it, you're done, you know, it's all set up. Yeah, my setup, like the table and everything here, it's all pretty much about the same. There's little tweaks here and there, but it's pretty much the same. Because I liked it. It worked. You know, uh, so why not? Why change things? I have a little more, well, I have a lot more space here than I did at the kid's house. And... Um, I was definitely spoiled because at my house, I mean, everyone moved out. I had a four bedroom house and it was just me. So of course I spread out and I took up a bedroom and a studio and a fabric room. So now the, the closet's a little tight here, but it's just mostly because of the way I have the large fabric shelf. Once I get things rearranged a little bit, in the fabric setup and stuff, it'll be easier. I can move some things around, put my clothes in a different spot, and it'll ease up some of the uh, traffic congestion I have going on in there. So I did notice with this, uh, whoop, with this iron, I do like to switch from hand to hand, so I have to be careful and make sure I kind of switch like this. So the legs don't come out. And if I get crazy with the steam, it does get wet on the table. So I, ow, oh, it's hot. I just keep a hand towel. So if I know I'm going to be like crazy steam and stuff, I just put the hand towel down to catch any of the water. Oh yeah, the triangle. I, I, I find I'm more of a, like an L-shaped I like just, I guess it does form a triangle if you have an imaginary line type thing. But yeah, I, I got really used to having a table here and then I had a table and a desk over there. Out of everything, I 100% missed that desk. It's a little disappointing because in the end, I could have fit it in the pod and brought it. But that's just because it made things so easy. It was a, it was a little short for a pressing station, but I was used to it. And then I had everything in those drawers all nice and organized. But it's fine. It's just, again, just getting used to something a little different. No big deal. Uh, yes, yeah, someone let me know that Missouri Star had the mini one. And they had it on sale for $85, the same price as Oliso had it on. It's out of stock now already, but I was able to get one, and it's going to be delivered tomorrow on Sunday on Happy St. Patrick's Day to those of you that celebrated it all, and I'll have the new iron tomorrow, so that'll be fun. Tomorrow is like my sewing day, so I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'll play with the iron if it comes in early enough. Yeah, as long as you don't have an obstacle, I definitely need a chair with wheels, 100%. I, I learned that lesson. I did so at like uh, this table with a kitchen table chair, like a dining room chair, and that didn't work for me. It just, I, I wore grooves into the carpet, sliding it and stuff. So I like, I like my chair with the wheels, so I have my same chair. It did kind of get a little roughed up in the travel. It kind of clunks a lot when I sit on it and move. But it clunked It clunked once before. Now it clunks in like two or three different spots. But it's fine. I don't mind. It just lets everyone in the house know I'm sewing. Clunk, clunk. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking the smaller one is going to be great because for smaller blocks and stuff, that it, it's going to be really helpful. I think I'm going to enjoy it a lot. I like it has a little bit of, this one at least, I know it has a little bit of weight to it. I like that. It's a really good steamer, and I think I'm going to enjoy having that little headlight on it too. So you'll be able to see that in an upcoming video at some point. I really didn't expect to have one until the end of summer, so I'm really kind of excited to have it show up.
when my daughter moved in last year, I lost half of my crafting space. It is difficult to adjust. It is. We just kind of get used to it, and you still have the same amount of stuff, and now you have, you know, less space for it. So it's like, hmm. I'm just utilizing the space like I did at the last place. I still have some bins underneath the table here and I just put some big large beach towels over it so if the cats lay on them because they love to lay on plastic bins then you know there will be no hair they're not going to get into the bins anyways but at least this way there's no hair or anything Ooh, rollerblade wheels nice Yeah, we just, we have to make adjustments, right? But that doesn't mean we can't stomp our foot and say, not whining, but just say, hey. You know, it's different. I don't like it. It's okay. We'll survive, but we don't have to be quiet about it. We can say it a couple times and then move on. I'll adjust. I'll find my new rhythm. I'll figure out how to get across town. I'll learn north, south, east, and west again. Plus the floods. I can't... Oh, yeah, you have the floods, so you have to make sure everything's at a certain level. I have a small Rowenta iron that I take to classes on small pieces. Yeah, I have that little handheld palm one, and that works great, too. But it doesn't have steam, and I, I really find that I am a steamer. I like a lot of steam. Uh, spritzing the fabric with water and pressing it isn't the same, in my opinion. And I just, I like what I like. It took me a while to realize that it's okay to like what we like and to like different things from other people, right? I mean, just because everyone on the channel likes something, I can like something different. You guys aren't here with me sewing. You're not the ones using things. So if I, if I want to do a different rotary cutter, different mat, different iron, then hey, you know, it's okay. We can all use what works for us. Sometimes I have to remind myself, you know, nobody's going to see. If I'm wearing socks with holes in them, you guys aren't going to see it. I don't like holes in my socks, so I would never do that. But, you know, if I want to use a different iron or a different sewing machine or whatever. I kind of wish I'd gotten a uh, serger many, many years ago. So I might have to start watching for a sale on one or something. Because I want to make some... Uh, fabric napkins. I'm tired of, because I always buy the less expensive napkins and then they're not very soft or absorbent and I don't use paper towels like that. So I'm like, huh. I could just save a little bit of money and make my own napkins. It arrived to my balcony. And I'm on the second floor and my neighbor had his apartment complete. Yeah, that is so scary. I, I remember some of your pictures and stuff. It's really, it's all good. It's all good, Terry. It's all good. Whatever works for you, you know, just if it makes you happy, why should we stress over it so much? And it's just because of all of the online abilities for people to see stuff, right? So is it hashtag Robin perfect? Doesn't have to be perfect. It's all going to work. However you get to that point is going to be fine. I have a brother, 1034D serger, popular and not difficult to thread. I'm going to write that down. Yeah, I just need something inexpensive. So if I want to do some clothes or if I want to, like, for when I do the, the pillows and stuff... It would be nice to surge around the inside of the pillow cover. Uh, brother 1034D. Easy to thread and use. I've seen the videos where you just 
after you thread it the first time, you know, then you just tie the next threads on and let it run through the machine. So I saw that cheat, so I'm good there. Oh, Superstorm Sandy was bad. It was, yeah. She loves a serger. She upgraded to a self-threading. Well, I like Brother sewing machines and ones that are similar to it, so. Yeah, it's not like a must. I don't have to have it. I can always kind of do the overcast on the sewing machine here and stuff. Both machines will overcast. But it's something to keep an eye out for if someone's giving one away. I see one in a thrift store or something goes on sale. I prefer to wait a while for something to make sure I know it's something I'm going to use. If, I, uh, if I'm like, hey... She has two surgeries, so she, oh, well, yeah, that makes sense, right? Keep, like, white thread in one and a dark one in the other. I've heard people do it with sewing machines, too. They'll, some people get the identical sewing machine, and they use one for one thing and one for the other, and they don't over, like, they don't have to, like, drop feed dogs for free motion quilting, or they keep white thread in this sewing machine all the time, and then they use the other one for different colors. All right. Now we do this. This iron is definitely heavy, even before I put the water in. I have noticed, I'm not like hitting the steam button a lot, but the water, I put, excuse me, two of these in. And at the time, at the beginning when I sew, I make sure it's full of water. And then it lasts the whole thing. It's, it's only, it's maybe halfway down now, if that. So uh, there's some irons that you're constantly having to put water in. They, they just go through so much. Yeah, I think so, because uh, th there's, there's a variety of things that I would use it for, for the shop, for myself and stuff. So I, I think, whoop, whoop, whoop. I think a serger, when I was making like kids clothes and pajama pants and stuff like that, it would have been nice, but you know, you can do without. I just think if the opportunity arose, I wouldn't be like on Amazon right now going, oh, let me just, oh, it's 20% off, let me grab it. No, I'm going to wait. Once I start looking on Amazon, Amazon's pretty good. They like to say, hey, we... We have this on sale. You've been looking at it, so. Because, of course, they want me to buy it, and, of course, I will. If it's on a good sale and it has good reviews. This yellow is a little thin, but I think it'll still be fine. Plus, then there's going to be other things that I would just have to do a little research to see what else you can make. Because I've seen people, they make an entire quilt on a serger. You use a lot of thread. Yeah, I definitely would go. Well, like for fabric napkins or the inside of a quilted pillow cover, while I don't want to say, you know, use the cheapest thread, you can use some of the big spools of the less expensive thread because it's there just to serve a purpose and not like hold your entire project together. You know, you have other seams. And then you have what? There's like the overcast machine and a serger and and three threads and five threads or whatever, all those different things. Uh, that's a little bit more than I need to get into, I think. I just need something basic. My Singer combo came with a serger foot. For the few times I would use it, the foot is a good option. Yeah. So, I, yeah, I just, I have an overcast foot for these. So I just, I want to see, like, maybe go to a store and and play with one and see if it's something I really need, <clears throat> excuse me, to take up extra space 
or is what I'm using perfectly fine? And I have a feeling that the overcast foot and the overcast on these machines is probably perfectly fine. It just would be nice to think about having a separate machine that's set up all the time and you don't have to change it. Oh, the cutaway foot. You know, I don't have a cutaway foot for these, but that would be nice. I would like to look into some different feet that would, um, like the rolled hem and stuff like that for either of the machines. Oh, this one's probably going to lose a point. Oh, yeah, that's going to lose a point. I'll have to do a little scant magic on that one. Let me see. This one right there, I'm going to lose that point. So you know, when you see it finished, you're like, ooh, I know Robin's secret. Dun, 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 dun. It's all right. It's not a crisis. It happens, right? There was a big controversy. Instagram has gotten so controversial. There's there's like the quilt police and people get out there and some of them can just, I don't know if they're just being nasty keyboard warrior warriors or whatever, but... Someone was doing a video and they did a little quick reel about the uh, two fabrics together, stitching around and cutting it with your scissors. And they're like, oh, you're losing all the points. You're not a real quilter if you're losing your points. But it's like that technique purposefully does that. You're supposed to lose your points on that technique. That's how it is, you know? So it's like, I don't know why people have to just make other people feel bad to make themselves feel better. It's like, yes, you're going to lose the points. So what? It happens. All right, let's put you over here. And let me show you the ones I made because we're pretty much done now. Two, three, one, a two. Uh, okay, I have you there. What the? Yeah, see, I'll need the other 18 of them to mix and match a little bit better so I don't have too many of, you know, the fabrics all together like that. But I think that's turning out really nice. I have another stack to do more. And then I'll just, I'll be more aware on my next ones because I think I must have had more purple fabric cut. And I know I have extra yellow fabric, but I didn't have as much of the other fabrics. Again, I can always add more in and change things up. But I like the way they came out. My quilts don't go into quilt shows. Forget the points if I lose one. Exactly, right? And if you're selling something like this will be sold online. I can see where I lost a little point right there at the corner. When you go to a quilt show, or not to a quilt show, when you go to a craft fair or you buy something online at Etsy, you can look at it, zoom in, expand the picture. You can see. So you already know, like, oh, if, if you're worried about the points and it bothers you, you know, you're like, okay, well, this project lost the points. Um, that's important to me, so I'm not going to purchase it. You know, and when you send something as a gift, people aren't really quilters that much. So they don't look and they're like, whatever, you know. No, nope. stop playing with it, Robin. Leave it alone. It's not permanent. <clears throat> oh, I love being able to mix the, the, the feet between my Juki and my brother. Uh, they're, some of them are just slightly different in the, like, 
not where it hooks on or anything, but like some of them are just a little different underneath. Some of them have a little wider spot where it clamps on and some of them are a little narrower, but they all work. So it's all fine. I love the pink and yellow, the pink and oh, this one. Yeah, that one's nice. I like that yellow. There's it's nice and bright in that yellow. Thanks everyone. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me and putting up with whatever we have to put up with today. Robin's raspy voice or whatever. I did have a studio light on, so now at least we're a little bit more of a, I always forget to turn up the brightness on my laptop. We're, uh, we're a little bit more white in here now and less yellow, so that's always helpful. So I think these are going to be really fun. I'm going to turn them into a, um, what am I going to do? Pillows. But something else that I'm working on that I'm hoping to finish probably before this is I'm working on zipper pouches. This is an Instagram find, and when they do these little hearts, and this one's done in like a square and a square, and then this one was one I'm working on with my patrons in tomorrow's video, a log cabin version. So I've been having a lot of fun just playing with all these bright and colorful fabrics. Uh, thanks, Terry. I'm going to go over and check out your channel next. Everyone should go over and take a peek at So Terry's channel. You might find something you love there. Maybe give her a little bit of love. And then um, just kind of, I like to, when I find a new channel, I like to watch some of their older videos. And then I like to give them uh, about a month to see if if we, you know, we fit together because not everyone fits together. I, I totally get that. We all don't like the same things and we don't do the same processes. But usually if you hang out in a live stream with someone, they're probably pretty close to the person you're watching. So that's usually, you know, a good thing. So like when I see people watching, if I'm watching Shabby Fabrics and I see that someone there has a channel, I usually go and check it out. I even watch, sometimes I watch people who are making clothing and stuff. I, I've, apparently I'm really into watching people renovate old houses now because there are a few craft people that have purchased old homes, either their childhood home or just one that they found that's crumbling around and they're remodeling them. And I've been enjoying watching them. Yep, check it out. See if you like it. If you like it, great. And then you'll go ahead and subscribe and give her a little bit of love. If you decide you've watched a couple of So Terry's videos and you're like, oh, I'm sorry, Robin, but we're not quite a fit, just giving her a like on a few videos and leaving a comment and saying, thank you for your hard work. I enjoyed your video or this part of your video, if it's not like a perfect fit, then it, it really helps people out with the YouTube algorithm to like a video to let it run start to finish and to uh, subscribe and leave a comment if you enjoyed it. Yeah, I like the home renovations, but I prefer to watch the ones like people like you and I, not people on HGTV. Those are fun, but it's all done in one weekend, you know, one video and stuff, and I'm not really into that. Yeah, you could, Jody, but then you might have to clean out some spaces in there. And from some of the stories you've told, I don't know. Basement might be scary. Basements in old houses can be very scary. But that's it. I'm going to go grab some lunch now. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. It's like, what, 3.30 or later for most of you? Some of you people, it's probably already getting dark. I don't know. It's kind of neat not doing daylight savings, but at the same time, I did enjoy having it be lighter later in the day, you know, at nighttime in like summer in Florida and stuff. So it's going to be a little different. I'm really trying to be conscientious of the time difference. So like when I talk to my daughter, it's three hours later. So when it's like six o'clock here, it's nine o'clock there for her. So it's a little bit different. All right, come back next week. You'll see a Whip It Wednesday and I'm hoping to do the bowl cozies on Friday's video. I just have to rewatch a couple of the videos I saw before 
to make sure I have all the new tips and tricks and make a sample and then we'll jump into it. Thanks so much for hanging out with me and I'll see you guys later. Bye. I didn't notice this little clamp was there. This is where I do my Whip It Wednesdays and I put my phone. It kind of looks like a dinosaur bones or something that's trying to chomp on people.